दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स ऑफ द कोर्स ए टू जीरो थ्री स्टेटिस एंड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल गो इन टू कॉन्टाइल्स एंड वी विल सी द हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द डिस्क्रिप्टिव स्टेटिस सिक्स इन अ सॉफ्टवेयर क्वार्टाइल्स एंड इंटर क्वार्टाइल्स वी विल गो फर्स्ट इन टू दैट एंड इन जनरल क्वान्टाइल्स आर एक्चुअली द टर्मिनोलॉजी वेन आवर डेटा सेट इज डिवाइडेड इन टू इक्वल नंबर ऑफ पार्ट्स सो वी विल गो इन टू द डिफरेंट शेप्स ऑफ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फॉर क्वार्टाइल्स क्वार्टाइल्स इन विच वी डिवाइड डेटा इन टू फोर इक्वल पार्ट्स uh we will go into the box and whisker plot uh, and uh, the terminology is related with deciles and percentiles and then in the math mini tab we will uh, go through the descriptive statistics so when your quartiles are when you divide your ordered data into four equal parts uh, Uh, then it is called as quartile so the first uh, quartile would be called as uh, sometimes called lower quartile which represents the 25% of the data set and uh, next 25% would be the middle of the data so that is actually called as second quartile so median and second quartile is actually the same thing uh, third quartile represents the 75% uh, of the data so first uh, quartile is uh, second quartile we first work out uh, that is actually called the median which is representing the middle of the data that is the uh, 50% of the data uh, first quartile represents 25% of the data which is actually the median of the uh, lower half once you divide uh, the data set into two parts so this would be called as lower half this would be called as upper half so first quartile is actually the 25% of the data or middle of the first half of the data first uh, what you call it the first lower half of the data a uh, third quartile is representing the 75% of the data or the middle part of the uh, second half of or what you call it an upper half of the data set so that is representing uh, the, that we call it a third quartile and q1 q2 q3 are the letters which are used to represent uh, uh, these quartiles so middle 50% data is actually represented by a term called interquartile range which is uh, the uh, uh, upper quartile minus the lower quartile so q3 minus q1 represent uh, the uh, interquartile which is actually representing the leaving the 25% half on one side leaving the 25% so it is actually representing the uh 50% of the data set okay now let's see from an ex uh, example in which we have an even data set so even data set means the number of uh, uh, points uh, that are present in the uh, data set are even in number so the first step is always to bring this data set into uh, uh, ordered form so the minimum value to be written first and maximum value be written to the end so if you arrange your data set in an ordered form then what you need is to first look for the median so median is uh, simply the uh, middle of the data and we see here the middle of the data is actually you have uh, um, uh, Uh, two data points so middle value would be actually the midpoint of these two data points so middle value we can work out uh, by taking uh, uh, this is actually the median actually not media this is actually the median of the data set and uh, uh, well it uh, median and uh, which is uh, the midpoint of 39 and 45 so 42 here comes out to be the median of the data set or se uh, second quartile okay uh, the next is you have the data set which is divided into two parts so 7 9 16 and 36 and 39 is actually a one of the half which you call it a lower half and then you have a data in the upper half 
so this is your lower half of the data set this is your upper half of the data set so the first quartile would be the median of the lower half of the data set so you divide the data into two parts and then your middle value would be your first quartile or uh, uh, on the upper half uh, if you divide the data into uh, two parts so this would be your uh, middle value so 46 becomes your uh, third quartile so uh, in this data set uh, uh, 16 is representing the first quartile and uh, 42 which is uh, the midpoint of 39 and 45 is representing the middle value and uh, um, uh, 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 46 is actually representing the uh, uh, data set uh, which is uh, uh, data which is actually the uh, third quartile. Uh, the, the 50 middle 50 value middle 50 percent of the data is actually called as an interquartile range. So interquartile range is nothing Q3 minus Q1 uh, would be called as an interquartile. So here 30 is uh, 46 minus 16 comes out to be 30. 30 is an interquartile range which represents uh, the measure of uh, uh, within this 30 uh, uh, the 50% uh, the of the data is middle data 50% of the middle data is lying okay if your uh, data set is uh, odd data set so it means you have odd numbers so obviously the first step is to bring the data into an ordered form and then divide the data into two parts so in uh, uh, odd data there will be a one middle point so 45 is taken as the middle point which you call it a second quartile so 45 is the middle value and then what we need is uh, we have to add the data median uh, that is to be added in the both parts of your uh, uh, lower half as well as uh, upper half so uh, along with 39 we put 45 to be added as uh, uh, one of the data points uh, for this uh, data and for the upper half also we have this 45 to be included in the uh, 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 midpoint of the data so that's what the median is a part of both lower half as well as uh, upper half now we can do the same thing get the median of the middle part of that uh, uh, data set which is uh, uh, divide the data into two parts and here 16 and 36 the um, uh, midpoint of that 16 and 36 would be called as first quartile and for similarly for an upper half if you divide the data into two parts then you end up with middle value is 46 and 48 so the midpoint of 46 and 48 would be 47 is actually the uh, uh, third quartile so this is how you have to do it uh, for an odd data set and interquartile is nothing just uh, subtracting the third quartile with first quartile that represents an interquartile range. Uh, so uh, these quartiles and interquartiles are actually uh, we need to calculate uh, in order to find out the uh, outliers in the data. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, outliers, uh, the limits for outliers can be worked out if we have a knowledge of uh, quartiles and interquartiles. So the Q1 is the lower quartile and if you subtract it 1.5 times of the interquartile range. So it is actually uh, gives us the limit, lower limit for the uh, uh, for the uh, number line in which we can say that our uh, data is from an outlier if the uh, number comes lower than this lower limit then it would be called as an outlier similarly for an upper limit the third quartile should be added with 1.5 times of an interquartile range so we will be able to calculate the uh, upper limit so in in the form of the figure we can say this uh, uh, this is the minimum value of the data and this represent this line represents the first quartile and this uh, value represents the second quartile which is actually the middle of the data and uh, the third quartile is represents 75% of the data and this is the maximum value. 
so interquartile range is q3 minus q1 so what we need is in order to get this uh, lower limit uh, we need uh, q1 to be uh, subtracted with 1.5 times of this interquartile range so whatever interquartile range is you multiply by 1.5 to you get this number and this number to be subtracted from the first quartile to get the value of the lower limit if any data comes other uh, lower than this lower limit then it would be considered as an outlier similarly for an upper limit uh, q3 plus uh, 1.5 times of an interquartile to be added then you got the number upper limit and if any data is uh, greater than this upper limit it would be considered as an outlier so uh, these interquartiles uh, range and quartiles can be used to uh, identify the uh, outliers in the data uh, there is a plot called box and whisker plot. Let's say if we have these two data points. Uh, so, um, and we have to look at uh, by drawing a box and whisker plot. So, here the data A is plotted and here the data B is plotted. So, uh, the, uh, this box is actually some, uh, this is a box and uh, the first starting point of the box is actually called as the first quartile and the uh, line in the middle or uh, anywhere in between the box uh, would be called as second quartile and this line is called as third quartile and uh, uh, so these are uh, these uh, lines are called whiskers and uh, uh, this is called box so that's why this plot is called uh, box and whisker plot so we can see in the data set a the minimum value is 10 10 is here and uh, uh, its uh, uh, quartile is this this data and this middle value is 20 which is uh, uh, true here so 20 is the middle point of the data and this is your upper quartile and this is the maximum value 31 is the maximum value of the data set and uh, if we plot uh, the data B as well, so what we observe is minimum value is 2 and its maximum value is uh, 40. And uh, 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 this is uh, lower quartile, uh, first quartile, this is median and this is upper quartile. So what we notice by comparing the two data set in the form of the whis whisker plot that the central tendency of the data for both A and B is actually the same. Uh, but uh, you see this uh, interquartile range would be Q3 minus Q1 which is smaller in A compared with uh, B and the whiskers are showing the, uh, 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 the, the lower half 25% uh, of the data set and this is another the, the, the extreme 25% of the data set so which these uh, length of the whiskers representing the spread of the data. So these uh, box uh, and whisker plots are showing the two informations. Uh, one of the information is the central tendency of the data which is represented by the median line. So median line is representing and in, these, in this case both data plot, both, both data set A and B having the same central tendency. But uh, the data in B is more spreaded compared with the data in A. So by plotting the box and whisker plot, we immediately realize uh, the spread of the data and how the data is uh, distributed as well. So we will look later, the shape of the distribution can be worked out through box and whisker plot. So these are very useful and we will see uh, in this today's lecture how to draw the box and whisker plot using the data set. Uh, so it's the shape of the distributions, let's say if your distribution is a uniform distribution, so you divide your whole data set into four equal parts. So the 25% of the data is representing first quartile, the next 25 plus 25, 50% of the data is represented by the second quartile and 75% of the data is represented by uh, third quartile. So, uh, and you can see the middle value is represented by in the box and whisker plot like this and the shape of the distribution is your both your whiskers in this case is of same length and uh, the median line is also in the middle of the box. So that represents that the data is uniform and obviously it is uh, symmetric uh, as well. 
and if you see a typical bell shaped distribution what you call it a normal distribution we will uh, see it later but if your data set looks like like this then uh, the middle value is represented by the second quartile and the 50 percent of the area of this data and under the curve uh, would be on the left side and 50 percent on the right side so that shape is actually called as symmetric distribution and for symmetric distributions uh, if you draw the box and whisker plot you will find that uh, uh, the box uh, median line would be dividing the box into two equal halves as well as uh, both whiskers are of same length uh, then this would be representing the uh, 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 this shape or this symmetric distribution. Uh, distribution could be something like this as well. For example, here you see uh, the middle data is uh, Q2 which divides the area into two equal parts. So 50% part would be this and 50% part would be this. And its median is slightly shifted. So in this box plot the lengths are not same. And similarly you see the most of the data is uh, lying on the right hand side and very few data points are lying on the left hand side so since you have less data on the left side uh, what you call it a, a left skew distribution and uh, uh, the shape of the box and whisker plots also represent the skewness of that distribution and we will look in the later part of the lectures uh, this skewness in detail as well uh, the right uh, skewness is such a distribution in which uh, the middle value divides the area into two parts and uh, uh, most of the observation you see uh, on the left hand side and very few observation you see uh, on the uh, right side. So uh, that's why it is skewed on the right and this is skewed on the left. So sometimes it is called as positive skewness and some uh, it is called as uh, negative skewness because it is going towards the left uh, it is called as negative skewness if it is going to the right it is called as uh, positive skewness. So the box and whisker plots and these quartiles uh, gives an idea about uh, some idea about the shape of the distribution and uh, right now we have plotted median but later we can see that we can plot other measure of central density as well. So the box and whisker plots uh, gives uh, the both uh, information the central density of the data as well as the uh, uh, dispersion of the data. Uh, there are some terminologies when you divide your whole data set into 10 equal parts uh, uh, then it is called as deciles. So uh, first decile D1 would be representing the 10% of the data set, T, D2 represent the 20% of the data set and so on. So and you can find uh, if you have n number of terms in your data set then n plus 1 upon 10 would be representing the first decile and 2 times of n plus 1 upon 10 representing the 20th percentile or 20th uh, uh, decile and uh, uh, d9 would be representing the 90th percent of the 90th uh, of the data which is called 9th uh, decile so these uh, uh, deciles are representing the whole data set is divided into uh, uh, 10 equal parts uh, if the whole data set is divided into 100 equal parts, it is called as uh, uh, percentiles. So the first percentile will be representing the uh, 100 part of the data and the n plus 1 upon 100 term would be representing the first percentile and uh, uh, so on we can write uh, and uh, uh, now we will do into the mini tab to see the uh, descriptive statistics. Uh, uh, on mini tab, uh, if uh, we can uh, do all the things which we have done uh, doing the central tendency of the data and the dispersion of the data. Uh, let's just start, we have some data in column 9 here and the data points, we have 4 data points, values 45, 64, 48, 51. Okay, one thing we can go on to if you go to the calculate button and uh, you go to the column statistics and uh, if you are interested in uh, the column statistics. So if you are interested in the sum of the columns of all the values or its maximum value, 
or minimum value or whatever it is. Let's say I am interested in the sum of that statistics so for this variable and I select C9 as my variable and I don't want to store. So I want to just see the sum of x. So if you add them together, uh, this number comes out to be 228. So this is how we can do the column statistics. So any column statistics can be worked out. Any parameter of interest can be worked out. Uh, we can do the same thing is if you go to the stats tab, basic statistics and allow to display the descriptive statistics. So here I am displaying the descriptive statistics. For example, this time also I select this uh, variable x uh, and what is statistics uh, we are interested in, uh, I can see here, let's say mean I am interested in, the standard deviation I am interested in. Let's say some we have already calculated, we can see that uh, uh, and the middle value as well. And uh, let's say the total number of uh, observations uh, uh, that can be shown here. So this uh, is actually different uh, descriptive statistics uh, uh, are uh, checked here. So each, whatever the, uh, you checked here, let's say interquartile also, I just check it out. So which would be the third quartile minus the first quartile and uh, uh, we have worked out the variance as well uh, we have worked out the range as well so far and uh, we can easily we can work out the coefficient of variation as well so i just click on ok and uh, once i want this thing to be on my session window i just click on so you see for variable x, uh, uh, this uh, descriptive statistics is shown in the session window. So the total number of count is 4, its mean value is 57, its standard deviation is this and 106.67 we already have worked out in the class, uh, its variance as well and uh, this uh, coefficient of variation is there, uh, the sum we already worked out to 28 and its maximum value is uh, 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 minimum value is shown here and maximum value is 68 and minimum value is 45 so range would be 68 minus 45 and it comes out to be 23 is the range and the q1 is its first quartile and median is its second quartile and q3 is its third quartile and it has calculated uh, all the descriptive statistics parameters for this uh, variable. So, uh, uh, and you can check that uh, uh, another way of getting the same information is let's say if I just am on this uh, C10 um, uh, toolbar, I can do the same thing just by going to the stats, basic statistics, displaced descriptive statistics. Okay, rather than displaying, what I can do now is to store the descriptive statistics. So, what is statistics? For example, the same uh, parameter x and the, the same statistics, let's say I want to store, let's say a few of them, the variance uh, I want, uh, let's say median I want. Uh, and uh, let's say the okay these uh, range or minimum or maximum i want range i want uh, i just click on that so i will be able to get uh, these uh, values instead of on this descriptive statistics that is available on the worksheet as well so mean of the data is the same is 57 and the variance is there the median is there minimum value is there maximum value is there range is there so this is uh, you can store the descriptive uh, statistics like that. Uh, we can do a lot of things uh, related with the data. For example, uh, if you have a, a, the same data for this uh, piston ring diameter. So if I go on to the basic statistics, uh, display descriptive statistics and I just choose uh, D as my variable and uh, uh, let's say these are the parameters which I'm interested in. I just click on. So I will be able for that variable uh, D variable. I can see that uh, the 10 number of data points and 52.3 is the mean value. Standard deviation is this. Variance is this. So if you take the uh, square of the standard deviation, you are going to get the variance. Or if you take the square root of the variance, you are going to get the standard deviation. 
and uh, this is coefficient of variation and first quartile so all the descriptive statistics parameter for uh, variable diameter which is given in a millimeter uh, that is available with this single command uh, what we can do more here is for example uh, you have this data set and um, uh, one thing is interesting if you want to calculate the uh, uh, or times for the data set uh, uh, different uh, 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 computational tools have uh, different formulas for example I showed you something in the lecture and uh, if you go to the help window here is you have to go into the methods and formula so I go into the methods and formula and here I have the basic statistics let's say and in basic statistics I am interested in descriptive statistics Okay, so you can see here these formulas which are for example calculating mean. So you have sum of x divided by total number of n observations and here n is the number of non-missing observations. So there would be a way by which you can calculate this uh, missing observation and that is represented by n star. n star is representing the missing observation and the uh, capital N is non-missing observation and the sum of the two is n total which is the sum of the missing plus the non-missing. So all these descriptive statistics, whatever the formulas used here are shown. For example, in the descriptive statistics formula for calculating the standard deviation. So you keep in mind uh, this formula by which the standard deviation is calculated in MEDAP is uh, only of the uh, uh, related with the sample. So it is a sample standard deviation. So the formula for population standard deviation having an n in the denominator. So uh, this mini tab is calculating only the sample standard deviation. Uh, in Excel, you will find formula separately for sample as well as for population. So they use a, a dot uh, stdev and then they use a symbol dot uh, 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 formula for cal different formula for calculating the standard deviation for population as well as for sample but in mini tab this is the formula that has been used uh, if you look into the median median is actually the middle value so uh, you have a different set of observations uh, so it is the formula for median is given which is actually half of the this observation plus this observation depending upon whether it is odd or even and similarly the formula for first quartile is uh, differently given here as we have used so uh, mini tab calculates first quartile based on this formula which is uh, uh, the first quartile is the y term plus uh, uh, z is actually a multiplier which is actually a fraction of that component uh, uh, if you have n observations, so n plus 1 upon 4 would be a whole number or it could be a, a decimal number. So here z is actually the fraction of the component that is actually not in the whole number. So for example it could be 0 0.25 or it could be 0 0.75 and then multiplied by this and uh, the previous uh, number then you will be able to calculate the first quartile. So you must always look for different formulas. Uh, which uh, MATTAP uses and you can go like that uh, to calculate uh, uh, each and every observation for example for trimmed mean we have already seen that uh, uh, it could be for 5% it could be for 10% and uh, the mini tab is calculating uh, at a given 5% so this is where uh, you can see Excel can uh, in Excel if you put the formula uh, you have a better control compared with mini tab because in mini tab these formulas are given and it is using only trim mean for 5% value so if you want 10% so you cannot use uh, mini tab to do this job uh, you need to do the same job in excel and excel provides you uh, more freedom in a sense that you can control your own parameters uh, but uh, this is where you can see all the formulas related with descriptive statistics. So always go to that. And let's say, for example, if this data set uh, I am interested in calculating the mean, median, and mode, so I just go on the graph uh, stats and basic statistics. And this time I choose a data which is uh, in the first column one. And uh, what is statistics? Let's say I am interested in it only. 
let's say the first quartile, third quartile, and uh, um, okay, the minimum and maximum, and uh, that's it. So let's say this is what I am interested in. So you can see for this data set, uh, the minimum value is seven, which is true, and maximum value is here uh, fifty-one. And the uh, first quartile is 14.25. So you see this number is not present in the data set. So this is by multiplying the fraction with the difference of the two values plus adding the previous value, you will be able to get this first quartile. Or there is a formula for third quartile as well. So this is how uh, they have calculated them. Uh, I mean, it is always best to draw, for example, in this last, uh, I draw the box and descriptive plot. So I just go to the plot, box plot, and I want two data to be plotted. I just select the multiple values of Y. And here, let's say my data set is A and B, they I have selected. Uh, and just I go under default. So I can see this data plot for A and B, and we can see both have same median. And uh, uh, even before going into the data plot, you can see the central tendency of the descriptive statistics of that data A and B. And the uh, box and descriptive plot shows uh, the spread in the data. And just by clicking on the data, if you just click here, you can transpose the data to this scale as well. For example, that is the 20 is the middle value, and uh, this is the lower limit, this is the maximum limit. And maximum limit here is maximum value uh, uh, is shown here in the whiskers 31 and uh, 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 the minimum value is shown here in the 10. So 10 is actually if you, if you click on that whisker, whiskers is whisker is uh, giving you the length 10 and 31 which is the length of the uh, whisker minimum value and the maximum value. And uh, uh, for similarly, you can be, uh, see for uh, who is the minimum value and 40 is the maximum value for data point, data set B. And uh, all its uh, median are the same. So if you compare the data is, uh, statistics, basic statistics, let's say I want to see the descriptive, uh, descriptive statistics for both the data sets. So this time I select both data set A and B. And what is statistics I want is, let's say, I just want to see the uh, Senate deviation. I want to see the first quartile median. Uh, okay, let's say, this is, I don't want it. Even um, mean is, I want it. I'm interested in the mean, median, and the mode. So mode is also available here. So if I just compare, so you see the descriptive statistics of A and B. Uh, total number of count is 10, the mean value is 20, the median is 20. So uh, even their mode is 20 for both data set. So mean, median, mode are uh, very much the same uh, for both data sets A and uh, B. And the distribution looks like uh, quite as uh, not the same, but the data B is very much uh, symmetric distribution, uh, not exactly symmetric, but uh, close to symmetric. Uh, but you can see that uh, 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 there is uh, a standard deviation. So there is a bigger deviation in A, a smaller deviation in E, and there is a bigger deviation in uh, data set uh, B and which is being uh, rep represented through their interquartile range as well. So data B has a high, bigger interquartile range. So there is a more spread in the data. Uh, another way of looking the same thing is you can do the box plot for that two data sets. I go to the box plot and uh, let's say I select these two data points uh, A and B. I just selected uh, and just I want to have a uh, no. I want to have a, 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 a not the box plot. Uh, I want let's say uh, I want the uh, uh, another way to look at it is uh, dot plot. Yeah. So dot plot for two different distributions. Uh, one can see, uh, and I select A and B. So if you look at closely, I mean, just I wanted the size to be bigger for this. Uh, let's say it would be 1.5 size, 
and then you can see in this data plot a 20 is the middle value which is in the center of the data and a has less spread and b has more spread so by visualizing the two data set you can uh, see their uh, spread and another way of looking at to draw the histogram for our uh, stem and leaf plot as well both can be done let's say draw the histogram for uh, so i want to fit the data with the group as well because here we have two data sets so i want a and b to be selected and uh, in multiple graphs i have an option of uh, overlaid or in separate panel let's say i wanted separate panel uh, same x same y and if i do it like this i can see that uh, uh, i have the uh, distribution plot of a and b uh, with the bell shape curve as well so we can see a is more data is considered in the center b also more data is in the center but it has a little more spread and the tails are much uh, the thinner whereas here the tails are much fattier and so we can see this is there is a spread in the data in the b uh, compared with the uh, a so histogram if you draw the histogram you can see the distribution of the uh, uh, data set so there is one more thing if you want to plot the individual data set we can do uh, this one as well there is a plot called individual value plot so for example individual value plot let's say two two data points and uh, the data set is exactly the same as a and b so you can see both a is uh, individual values are plotted so it is different from the dot plot but it is uh, the individual value plot that's why it is called individual value plot of a and b and b you can see individual values are much wider spread and a has uh, less spread so these are the different ways by which we can uh, visualize data and we can uh, see its central tendency and we can see the uh, spread of the data or variability of the data or what we call it uh, a dispersion of the data in um, um, uh, mini 10. So this is where I stop uh, this lecture.